episode number 29 of the Wholesome Fertility Podcast. Welcome to the Wholesome Fertility Podcast. I'm Michelle, a fertility acupuncturist here to provide you with resources on how to create a wholesome approach to your fertility journey. My next guest is Angel Depara. Angel has been my go-to feng shui guy for over seven years. Angel is the founder and chairman of Earth Luck International. Angel trained in classical feng shui by world-renowned masters of feng shui. With over 30 years of experience and worldwide study in classical feng shui, it may be surprising that Angel has not always believed in this ancient study. Angel began as a man of science in the technology field of aviation. He is professionally trained and certified in the physics of aviation. He successfully owned and operated ADP Aviation Incorporated for 12 years. His clients included numerous FAA contracts and commercial airlines. As Angel began to practice feng shui, he saw powerful results in the lives and businesses of his clients, and this led him to create a full career change. Angel became fascinated with the mathematical application of classical feng shui theories and their ability to bring insight to human behavior, businesses, environments, and environmental changes. Angel not only practiced feng shui, but he has taught and lectured extensively in the U.S. and internationally. So welcome to the podcast, Angel. Thank you for having me. So great to have you. You've been my go-to feng shui guy for many years. Um, it was an, a funny story. I, I don't know if you remember when I had my contractors in the house. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the that's right. <laughs> that brings back memories now. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And first we went time. up even down the stairs. Yes. The first time I had Angel here, uh, the contractors were there and I said, oh, I have my feng shui guy here. I can't really talk because they wanted to talk and they looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. And Angel's like, I can't believe you just said that to the contractors. They're really not going to get this. <laughs> <laughs> they went home and looked it up. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, what? <laughs> so, uh, so awesome. I'm really happy to have you on here. And, no, I'm really uh, excited to be on here. This is actually my first time on a podcast. Well, that's that's a shame. We're going to have to start a new trend here because you have so much great information that people need to hear. <laughs> <So> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We have to change that. So, uh, so cool. So for the listeners, how did you discover feng shui in your own life? Well, m my background is in aviation. I'm a licensed aircraft mechanic, uh, both for airframe and power plant. And that's what I studied. And I when I once I graduated aviation school, um, I got recruited by Goodyear Aerospace. And um, I didn't believe in, in anything at all that had anything whatsoever to do with any form of metaphysics. Because, of course, you know, everything is math and aviation or physics. You know? mm -hmm. So what happened is that um, my ex-wife at that time, she was studying law. She wanted to be an attorney and her and working in a law firm and as a paralegal and her mm -hmm. friend was very metaphysical and she wanted to go see this real famous psychic at the time. Mm -hmm. And, um, she was putting pressure on my wife, my ex-wife, and then, um, about going with her cause she didn't want to go alone. And what happened was that she calls me up and she says, Hey, can, you know, so-and-so is, is putting pressure on me to go to the psychic. And I go, you know, that's fake, uh, you know, that's not real. Cause I, I knew nothing about that at that time. Mm -hmm. And then she calls me back again later and she says, look, she won't let it go. And I said, just let, just tell her we don't have any money mm -hmm. and you, you know, you can't pay for it. And that would be the end of it because it was a very expensive um, audit. So I doubted that she was going to pay for herself and my ex-wife. Right. She calls me up 30 minutes later and she says, Hey, listen, that was a total fail, right? It didn't, you know, not only didn't, didn't work. She paid for her, oh, wow. the, for her, her portion of the consultation. So now she's going, and I said, just go. And then she went and she came home in tears because the psychic told her that she was going to die young. Oh, and wow. The, 
And the reason that she had paid attention to what he had said was because my ex-wife, when she was 17, which was at the same time that we had met, she had just bought her own gravesite because she always had a feeling she was going to die young and she didn't want to be a burden to her family. My God. So she falsified her parents' signature and she paid with a check. You know, back then it wasn't, you know, notary and things like that wasn't required. It was just required after the sale. Mm -hmm. So, now I had a problem because now at that time, my wife is upset, you know, and depressed and, and this psychic has turned my life upside down. And, and I don't believe in that at mm -hmm. that time. So I decided to go to him on their assumed alias name, my friend's car. I always dress as an executive because by then I was already in charge of quality control for one of the subsidiaries of Goodyear Aerospace. Mm -hmm. And when I went to him, I'm sitting in his office in, in the chair in front of his desk and he comes in behind me and I stand up to greet him and I shake his hand. And as we're holding hands, he, he looks over my head and he says, how come I see so many airplanes around you? You either what? work in aviation or near the airport. Oh my God. And you know, that's, that really set me on fire. You know, <laughs> I, didn't, you know wow. I didn't know how to to, you know, read this, you know, mm -hmm. physics just went out the window and so did all the right. math, right? Right, right. So um, I decided to go to another psychic and, and then that psychic um, also picked up on some little things that, you know, that were going on in my life that they're not supposed to be aware of. And then I went to another psychic and that person also did the same. But the difference was that each one of them were reading me, but utilizing a different tool. You know, remember mm -hmm. my background's right. engineering, so I see it as a tool, right? So I, I I decided to quantify the sample space of the universe, you know, and then I called every single psychic I was most likely gonna go and attend, which was at that time, the yellow pages under two sections, right, under spiritual mm -hmm. and religious, and then I called them and asked them how they did their consultation and put them into an Excel spreadsheet, okay. and. As I was researching one column, right, I was attending the other and just trying to familiarize myself and have a little bit of basic knowledge before I went to see these psychics because I want to understand this world. And, mm -hmm. and then um, after about six years, five to six years of different initiations, because I didn't care if I had to take an initiation to see your tool of how you see the future, because my faith and my religion and in my God was, was all within me. A, a, a ceremony wasn't going to change my faith. I just want to see your tool as a scientist. Right. And I met many people that could see the future, but I was interested in changing the future. Right. So then now I'm a psychic junkie by then. And I always went to the bookstore yeah, and the metaphysical section of the bookstore. And there was this brand new book on feng shui written by Sarah Rothback, you know, mm -hmm. interior fun interior uh, design with feng shui, I think it was called in the early 80s. And I picked it up and it made a little bit of sense, you know, from a scientific perspective that we live on this earth and everything on this earth is held accountable to laws and principles of physics, you know? Mm -hmm, right. And to think that we are above the laws of physics, that everything else has to abide by is egotistical. And then I, that, I, I was, uh, I said, that's it. I found it. And I mm -hmm. wanted to know more. So then I started, um, at that time, uh, this was the, what they called black hat sec feng shui which later there was discrepancies that is it authentic or not authentic. I didn't right, really care. Right. I just yeah. wanted to, I just wanted to be around when people who want to talk about feng shui, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and then I explored all my options here. And then when I heard about what they called authentic Chinese feng shui, I wanted to know more. And then um, I was ranked in judo and uh, um, Japan Federation. And when I was a little boy in martial arts, so, I decided to go to Asia because after exhausting all my avenues here in the United States, no one was really teaching at that time classical Chinese feng shui. And I wanted mm -hmm. to take it to the next level and know everything there is about feng shui. So then um, at that time, there was it wasn't Google, it was America Online. And I had met this master. And by coincidence, um, he also was 
very schooled in, in martial arts and Kung Fu. And mm -hmm. we had something in common. We hit it off and he had, he already had planned one trip to the U S and then I, I approached him about becoming a representative for the United States and, and for South America to educate, to bring this knowledge to the U S. So that was way back in the days when the Asian master started coming to the U S and he was, mm -hmm. he was actually the second master that came, you know, within two months or three months of each other. Mm -hmm. They started coming to the U.S. And that's how I started. And then I started doing feng shui. I, I started going to Asia to learn it. And then after um, I felt comfortable applying some of the techniques, I started applying them to friends. And, and then they recommended me to other friends. By then, mm -hmm. I had my own aviation company. So it was quite easy for me to leave work and go do this. And I started doing it like that. And, and then word of mouth started spreading and, and it got to a point where either I continue with aviation or do I continue with feng shui? And I decided to go with feng shui. Wow. That's pretty cool. Did you know my story completely or? Um, I did, but I, um, I did somewhat. I oh. knew that you uh, had gone to China and, and had studied, but I don't remember your wife and the psychic or ex-wife. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember leave that. I don't want to hanging because everyone always asks yeah, me, so what, what about what, the ex-wife? So she still alive? <laughs> yeah, she's still alive. <laughs> okay. And what did you find? Um, did, did it have anything to do with feng shui? What was, what was it that came about with that? Because if he was a good psychic, why yeah. was he wrong? <laughs> he, you know... It's not that he was wrong, is that when you're talking physics and, and, and you know, parallel universes and, and choices and decisions, mm -hmm. you get into a very touchy subject because if you alter one event, it alters a string of events. Mm -hmm. That's why they say that a butterfly can flap its wings in Africa and we can have a tsunami in another part of the world, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So it's a string of events that everything is connected. Um, what happened much later was that girl that introduced my ex-wife to the psychic, she ended mm -hmm. up dying exactly the way she was supposed to. My ex-wife was supposed to. What? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So do you think that she took on that energy or that she, that he misread your wife? and? No, because my ex-wife, that girl was not in the room. It was one-on-one -on -one consultation. Right. So it was a very personal consultation, but you, you alter events. So, but that's getting heavy into, uh, you know, predicting and, and things like right. that. Right. No, I will. didn't know that that would happen, of course. Right. Yeah. But uh, that's what happened. And she was supposed to die in a white car and, and uh, in a car accident. And that's exactly how my ex, I mean, the, my ex wife's uh, friend died. Wow. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. So, uh, so back to feng shui, I know it's, it's a very fascinating topic and we could talk about it for hours because I, I love metaphysics and the mm -hmm. mysteries because I do think that there's something to it. And just because we haven't studied it yet and there hasn't been research on it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. I'm big on that. Well, the, the difference between metaphysics and physics is if the theory can be explained experimentally, meaning can we replicate it? over and over and over again. Then it, it leaves meta and goes into physics. Mm -hmm. Got it. You know, and and I do believe it can be. I'm yeah. pretty tired of doing it, you know? Yeah. And and so um, as far as what feng shui is, a lot of people don't really know what it means. Like, how would you define feng shui to the layperson? You know, to, to the basic audience, you know, someone says, you know, feng shui translates into wind, water and all that kind of um, type of mindset. To me, it's just about how the, the choices of the consequences, the concept, you know, the choices of the consequences of your decisions that we make mm -hmm. can be explained by our environment. If you're doing very well, right? Mm -hmm in your in your career and you just purchase a home that home by laws and principles of feng shui when you when a feng shui a master comes to take a look at it it represents good decisions that you've made it represents the success trail right and mm -hmm. the opposite is also true 
And if you're having problems in your relationship, it will also show up there. So mm-hmm. you can look at a current property now and take a peek of what happened maybe 10, 15 years ago. Although you weren't living in this current home 10, 15 years ago. Right. Because everything we touch has a meaning in, and they're an energetic value that can be measured with a tool. And the tool of feng shui, what struck me and you know, drove my attention toward it was that I never thought of how can one tool quantify everyone, right? Mm-hmm. And it can be done because no matter who you are, you have to live in a, in a building, either an apartment or a home, right? Mm-hmm. And this home has to face one of eight cardinal directions. Mm-hmm. So you can't get away from it. You can't say, oh, I don't believe in feng shui. It's still taking place. Right. If you look at it or you don't. Yeah. And it's it's really very much the same principles in the environment as we as Chinese medical practitioners use for the body. Mm-hmm. Same exact elements. Yes. And, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty interesting, the connection between the two. Yeah, because in Chinese metaphysics, the basic origins of everything is from the Tao, and the Tao, the basic or the fundamental principle of the Tao is the the yin yang, and from the yin yang is the creation of the trigrams, right? And then uh, the, which are a set of these little lines and interrupted, and you know it looks like a broken line and a solid line, mm-hmm. and from there is the creation of feng shui and all the metaphysics, right? And Chinese metaphysics, physics. Mm-hmm. The five base, you know, the five element theory, which is it's like the, the I Ching. The I Ching is created from the trigrams, yes. Yeah. So interesting. And so you practice classic feng shui. Can you describe the difference between the different schools of thought? Well, one uses, you know, the they refer to it as black hat sec feng shui. That was the terminology that came later. The, the first teachings um, or introductions to the U.S. and really to the world, and we have to be very thankful for that individual when they started writing about it because then people started exploring, searching for more. But when it comes to feng shui, there's classical and then there's uh, black hat sec feng shui, which is also referred to before as form school feng shui, which mm-hmm. is a misconception because in classical there's form School and then there's San Juan, which is a time aspect. There's Sang He and San Juan, right? There's form, Sang He and San Juan, which is a time aspect. And those two, all the theories of Feng Shui f- books in Asia fall under one of these two categories. Right. In the so United the classical States, has form as well. Yes. The they yeah. were the basic forms which are taught really for like for children and for poems and not to forget things, you know, the dragon, the tiger, the turtle, right? Mm -hmm. That's not literally true, all right? It's about Mm. the energies around us and how it's contained. And that's what they were pointing at when they were describing those um, mystical animals. Right. Because some people literally use those mystical animals in their house, yeah, and you and do not do that. that you don't no, do that. No, nor, nor do they in Asia. Yeah. You know, they sell it to foreigners. They manufacture those things and sell them to foreigners. Yeah. Right. But there's no three-legged toad. I mean, does a three-legged toad sound lucky to you? He's missing yeah. a leg. <laughs> That's it. Good you know, point. It, Good point. I get it. <laughs> and then put a coin, and then there's all these misconceptions of of the coin facing in or the coin facing out, right? You know, so those are, I mean, more of like the superstitious kind of correct things. And and what you do is different, and that's actually I tended to gravitate towards how you approached it because you literally have me fill a bucket of still water or get some kind of moving water, whether it's a fish in a bowl or a mm-hmm. water fountain, because moving water is different than still water. And then wind Correct. chimes outside, um, you don't put wind chimes inside because you don't want the metal to sound inside. You want the metal to sound outside well, versus solid metal inside in certain locations. Yeah. You know, the thing is that we have to understand that these elements come from nature. 
right? Right. And metal is strong in metal sound, not in metal element. Mm -hmm. So it's secondary to play something made of metal, right? Right. And it, and if you wanted something more aggressive, then you want that metal ringing sound, right? Right. On the outside, that because you need the win mm -hmm. on it. And then it, how many tubes does it have? How can how can nature know how many tubes are ringing? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, you know, you get all these books, and they'll say, "Oh, it must have six book, six tubes," and now they're they're going into form school type rep representation. You know that six is big metal, and big metal is the strongest form of metal versus um, the seven, which is small metal. Right, you know? but that's just symbolic. Yeah, so so you do it more in like the most realistic way. You just tell me get those elements in your house, whether it's like a large statue of wood, and and that's it, it kind of distinguishes you from some of the other feng shui mm -hmm. uh, practitioners that I've seen. Correct. You yeah. know, and, and and it's not that they're wrong. It's just the different forms of education. You know, it makes and it more realistic. That's for sure. <laughs> So, so what are some of the craziest stories that you've experienced from seeing star numbers correlate with events that happen in your client's life? We had a friend, my ex-wife had a friend when I was studying feng shui and she didn't believe in feng shui, neither did her husband, but we were all friends, you know, mm -hmm. and she was trying to get pregnant and she couldn't get pregnant. And then mm -hmm. one day in their desperation, they were trying to in vitro and spending a lot of money, things like that. And it just wasn't working. And then I had told them, you know, they asked me one day, okay, so what is feng shui? When, what can it do for me? So then I told them. The problem was that the facing of your house was bad for the husband and the bedroom was bad, or the bed position was bad for the wife. Mm -hmm. And two variables indicated, you know, the odds are against you astronomically, right? Of mm -hmm. getting pregnant. So they, they go, oh, okay, thank you. So they tried again you know, with the doctors and it didn't work and it didn't tell me anything, but they changed their bed mm -hmm. on their own and they didn't tell my ex-wife and they didn't tell myself. And then they got pregnant. Wow. <laughs> and then how did I find out? Because shortly after they got pregnant, I had gone to their house and I went to the bathroom in their house in the hallway. And I noticed that the bed was no longer in that position. And I asked them, when did you change the bed? Oh, we were going to tell you. But that, that was a, another story on that. And then I, right. I, you know, I have clients that see me and they, because I never say no to anyone that needs help. And I have clients that pay me with a, uh, a flung, which is like a, a Latin custard pie, right? And, I love fun. <laughs> yeah. And then I have clients that are on the Forbes list. And that was our whole purpose of getting on the Forbes list. And it was a 16 year long journey. Right. And you have people who do this for business, international businesses. Yes. Yeah. I've done now, we estimate in my office that I've done um, more than 90,000 consultations so far. Wow. That's. Yeah some experience there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just today in the morning, I, uh, before 10 o'clock, I had done 19 executive managers office feng shui. And I try to That's automate amazing. and computerize things and things like that. To make it easier. Well, it's gotten a lot easier actually now that you have this new program Zoom. where we can do it online. You can show me. Yeah. So oh my God, it makes a huge difference. Yeah. Because I had clients that, May, uh, for like 16 years, we had never met where it was always on the phone and by floor right. plans. And because with Google's help, you know, we can reverse engineer and be very accurate with our readings. And I don't have right. to be present in the home if I can see it from Google. Right. Of course, you, you need to know a little location. bit more about science to do that. But so, so can you share with the listeners how you figure out what direction is best for people? Well, there's two methods, right? There's one that's more like, um, and think of it like um, investments, right? If you went to an investment broker, right? And you gave him a, a lump sum of money and, and you wanted he, him or her to invest it for you, they would ask you, you want short-term investing or long-term investing, right? Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. It, the same thing happens with some f- feng shui, and it depends on which school of feng shui. That's why it's very important that when you hire someone, you hire someone that has knowledge of both and has applied both for a very long period of time, right? And then the number one thing is to find out what is the problem in their life. Right. You know, if it finance, because everyone always calls me for three reasons, reasons mainly. One is financial, the other one's romantic, and the other one's health. Some right. people are curious. I've had a few of those, right? Mm-hmm. But it's always primarily one of those three reasons. And before going in there and saying, put this here, put that there, put that there, try to identify what is it that, what energy is present that's causing that blockage to that individual. And then try to fix that. Rem- the best way to fix it is remove it. Meaning that if if you can move a bed or you can move a desk or you can reposition mm-hmm. or you can come in through another door to your house, like a garage door versus the main door, sometimes right. that alone fixes everything and you don't have to do anything else in your life. And right. sometimes the problem is just transiting energy, meaning the cycle of time that you're stuck in, right? And it's about mm-hmm. to get, go away. And that's the one right, that so I love. So updating the, most. the house can also make a difference. Yeah. And of course, yeah, updating the house, because if there's a negative energy, there's no human being that can remove that negative energy because it's, it has to do with the earth. But what can we do with it? We can minimize it drastically, you know, util- utilizing the five elements. Right. You know, and and it's just about minimizing it to the point where it no longer affects you in a negative way. Right. Because everyone and, has different resistance. Some would yeah, get the cold right away and some needs to be, be exposed to the whole family for three weeks. Right. <laughs> and then um, another thing is I remember you mentioning, which is actually important to note, is that it really, there's three different parts of luck. Yes. One is the individual, what, what the person's born with. Another one is the environment that they're in. And the third one is free will. It's how you choose to manifest things in your life, your choice. Well, well, let me explain it uh, the Chinese way. The, heaven's luck, man's luck, and earth luck, right? Mm, okay. So heaven is what they refer to as in metaphys- Chinese metaphysics as um, the pillars, your Chinese astrology, right? Mm-hmm. Or or Vedic astrology, any Western or Hindu astrology, or your faith in God, whatever, right? And then there's man's luck. Man's luck is where there's free will, right? Mm -hmm. If you work more diligently, you have greater odds of success than the individual that does not, right? Mm -hmm. Then there's earth luck. Earth luck is our environment and that there's energies in our environment. We've all walked into a room and said, wow, I feel so good. Or wow, it doesn't, I don't like this room. It gives me the creeps. It's true. And no one that, knows why. That is true. I think every single person can attest to that. Yeah. And we've also done it with other individuals. I don't know. I just don't like that person. Yeah. Yeah. Because Absolutely. The, the Chinese also said that humans, people are also sources of energy. And how is that represented is by the day you were born, you know, and that's where the Chinese astrology comes in and things like that. Now, you, you know, heaven's luck, you can't really change, Right. But the mm-hmm. other two are, are, yes, they're within your control, you know, right. man's luck and earth luck. So you can manipulate a lot of heaven's luck. You know, it's interesting because I I had talked about this in the podcast where I talk about the kidney energy in Chinese medicine. Mm-hmm. And the kidney energy has pre-heaven chi and post-heaven chi. Yeah. And the pre-heaven is what you're born with. It's yeah. you get this from your parents and there's nothing you can do about it. But a person with low pre heaven chi mm. that lives correctly by the laws of nature, yeah. treats their body with respect, treats their mind with respect, can have more energy in essence in the end than somebody who was born with a ton of pre heaven chi really got the gold mine of genetics. And ends up wasting it away with drugs and alcohol, nasty behavior, nasty way of living. Mm-hmm. And it's it's kind of an interesting thing because feng shui, is just, there's so many parallels yeah. of looking at the environment and looking at the body. No, and we have that as well because that's what we refer to as early heaven and later heaven chi. 
you know, yeah. early heaven chi is, is things that are outside of your control, you know, pre you, your fate, heaven, right? And then mm -hmm. there's post, which is more about things that are within your control and things like that. And it's how to read them in your environment. Right. It's fascinating. I, I've always been fascinated by it. I mean, it really comes down to this, whether, because some people may not believe in it, they, it might seem too abstract, but just because you can't measure it tangibly doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Just like, for example, love, you can't measure love, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And I always use that because you can't mm -hmm. measure that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the I, same I always goes, say, prove it to me. You know? Yeah. And, and what the same thing goes, I mean, what you, what you said is just absolutely true. I don't know if there's one person who hasn't felt what you just described when they walk into certain rooms, they can feel an energy or a vibe. It's 100% true. Sometimes no, those old homes, they're heavy. Yeah. And you feel like you could, you're like suffocating. No. And, and you know, some real estate properties, commercial properties that every business that goes there goes out of business or has yeah. a short life. Right. Every realtor knows that in every city in the world. Yeah. It's pretty cool. There's those locations. Cause I, in my seniors class, I take my students to those locations and they tell me, try to figure out why this is taking place present it to me in a PowerPoint presentation, right? And then after that, explain to me how you would fix it if if I gave you this building because you're not going right. to throw it away. Yeah. And then these are the drills that we do, you know, when we're trying to figure out things in feng shui. And also when you talk to someone and you ask them, so why were you not born rich? Mm -hmm. Well, what are they going to say? It wasn't my fate. It wasn't my destiny. Uh, Mm -hmm. There, because that in itself proves that there's something that affects us outside of our control. Right. Yeah. There is an. Uh, there's definitely an element because uh, people can work like crazy and have the best work ethic in the world, and and just don't make money. Yeah. And we've talked about this. You know, you talk to ER uh, doctors and around the full moon, and and ask them how they feel about it. My husband, my husband is the most um, analytical, scientific based person, non spiritual, doesn't talk. He's very, very opposite of me, although we both respect each other's minds. Uh -huh. He's all he's he's all about like, show it to me. I need to see it to believe it. Although we do, thank God, respect each other's uh, way of thinking. But he tells me he's like, I don't know what it is. But I get the craziest people coming in during full moon. Uh -huh. And every single other ER doctor <laughs> that That's works crazy. with him will attest to it. And they're, yeah. it, they're all doctors. They're all Western-minded people. And it's pretty wild. <laughs> of course. Of yeah, course. it's pretty crazy. The problem with metaphysics is that, that anyone can study it anywhere. You know, And I believe a lot in, in Chinese astrology. But anyone can study it anywhere. Right. Mm -hmm. And it is not like a university setting, which would, there, there was structure and principles and guidelines, right. To making sure mm -hmm. that you got the proper education. And then what happens is that anyone can study it on the weekend course, even mm -hmm. about feng shui and a weekend course in some bookstore, which is quite all right, but you don't know if you're getting the right source of information or training there. And then later on, these people end up going out and doing feng shui and representing feng shui, and they end up becoming the ambassadors of feng shui or astrology or other metaphysical arts. And that's when they start to get discredited, you know? Right, right. That's a good point. It's true. So can you share how feng shui can specifically affect health and fertility? You had mentioned it um, with the one example that you had. But it could be literally like the way, the room that you're in, mm -hmm. the direction you're facing, and also the elements, correct? Correct. And when we talk about energies and feng shui, we relate them to nature and the five elements, right? Mm -hmm. And then human beings also are represented by the same tool, meaning the five elements. And mm -hmm. what we're looking at is the, the key energies, you know, the strongest energies, one of them being the front of the house, the bedroom, right? Mm -hmm. And the individual's birth chart. 
right? Right, because the front of the house, you're walking in and out, in and out, wherever the yeah. door is. So there's a lot yeah. of activity there. Correct. And then the bedroom is where you're spending a lot of, like most of your time because you sleep there. Correct. And then it is how these energies in triangulation are working together, you know? Mm -hmm. So it some people don't realize it. Sometimes the, it's just moving out of the house or moving into a new bedroom. There's some people that like to change the furniture a lot. Mm -hmm. And they sure. don't pay attention really to what happens in their life when they do that. Right. And I've met people that rotate their furniture, you know, oh, this yeah, year they too. put it here, two years later, they put it over there. Yeah. But they're not paying attention. I've had even less than two years. I know people that do it like every couple of months. But if you were to pay attention to the events that take place in your life, you would see that it was, there was a correlation to the position. How mm -hmm. is it that a bed mystically can change your life in some way? Well, it's one third of your existence. Wow. One third yeah, of your true. existence is in a bed, eight hours yeah. sleeping. Right. So the yeah. location of your bedroom plays a vital role or right. an apartment. The whole apartment, sometimes when you look at a building, maybe depending on the cardinal directions and stuff, it might slice into two um, sections of the pie of maybe two cardinal points, right? Mm -hmm. But maybe your whole apartment only has one energy, you know, and that right, plays right. a vital role. When I when I've seen in when it comes to um, trying to have a family, it's about the timing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all about the timing of when you do it, the procedures, that, and you know, because there's different methods out there that you're going to be doing, mm -hmm. and they all have different cycles and how busy the doctor is and how fast can they see you, and then when's the next step and the third step and the fourth step. It's right. about scheduling it so you can have the best, you know chances of getting pregnant because right. if you went to authentic feng shui that was thousands of years ago and tried to look up what's getting pregnant it doesn't exist mm -hmm. because it was three thousand years ago right so how is it that i can say it is that i kept journals i doing so many audits i kept notes Right. And and the best notes I decided to do was to teach my seniors, you know, which were a set of 20 to 25 students that have been with me now for over 20 years. And mm -hmm. we, we do case studies and everything right. I learned new, I, I pass it on to them and they become my journal, you right. know, of everything I find new. It's amazing. Yeah. It's so fascinating. I, I love it. I, it's just so interesting. And um, is there, I know that it's so catered and it's so specific, but is there a tip that you can share for the listeners? A basic tip? Mm -hmm. um, of course, there's certain energies that can, um, I, I don't want the listeners to go by those textbooks, feng shui out there and get afraid and say, because there's more information out there about feng shui that leads to fear. When, mm -hmm. You know, everything's bad. This is bad. That's bad. You know? Right. That's true. That's not true. I don't want okay. you to ever, you can put your back against a window. You can put your headboard under a window. You can sleep mm -hmm. under beams. They were right. all beams thousands of years ago. Drywall right. on the ceiling didn't exist, people, you know? And the reason yeah. a bathroom was not inside of a house was because it didn't exist, not because it was improper feng shui. So when mm -hmm. a book talks about the bathroom not being located or it's in the wrong position. And that's the reason why this is happening. That is nonsense. Mm -hmm. It's not that, you know, one of the things is if you've been trying to get pregnant, change your bed to another position. If, if your room allows it, you know, mm, that's a good point. Just to try it out and see. Yes. And leave it there, you know, for a while, you know, timing is vital. You know, especially when you're trying to get pregnant and you're crossing over into a new year because you don't know what the new year energy brings, you know? Right. Because cause every year, this is why I do every year an audit with Angel because every year everything changes. So all of the remedies that I'm given in one year changes with the Chinese New Year, which is approximately end of January, February. Mm -hmm. And then I, I learned first how to predict and what I wanted to learn how to predict was because there was things that weren't, you know, if you still study with Asian masters and they're studying the classical old way, which is okay, but it's outdated. You know, it's like learning Microsoft Excel from 1997, mm -hmm. you know, and here we are. Right, right. That's a good point. 
you know, it, the books have not been updated. I remember when one feng shui master got really upset with me in Asia because I was I was telling students that I knew about when a house had real estate luck, for example. Mm-hmm. And they said, that's not true. It doesn't exist in the classics. And that's an example that some people are still practicing it the old way, you know? Mm-hmm. And the system right. itself needs to be updated. But there's, since there's no unified foundation where we can share our notes as scientists, right? And then there's mm-hmm. these egos, you know, that, oh, I found this out first. And uh, because right. my school of feng shui has practically been kept secret because I don't want to write books about it. I am now starting to write some books and I did it mainly for the acupuncturist, right. you know, on five element theory, you know, because I want to expand the mindset. Not that I'm going to teach you anything new because metal, you know, interacts with wood in a certain way. And that's not going to mm-hmm. change in my school, but it's, there's characteristics and there's so many other derivatives that are associated with it, you know? So I am yeah. going to write that book and I am going to write another one of my autobiography of my whole life. Oh wow! Let me tell. Let me know when that happens, so that I'll put you on the podcast again to talk about it. <laughs> no, whenever you like. I I love feng shui, and if if they have questions, your audience has questions, and they want to know about certain things, I'll be more than happy to come back as many times as you like. Awesome! And and so, where can people find you if they want to reach out and find you? Well, my my website is Earth Luck. You know the the third <laughs> one of uh, of the pillars. Mm-hmm. Uh, and earthluck at doc at, um, earthluck.com. Right. And mm-hmm. you, you can Google my name, which is angel de para or earthluck.com. And you'll find my website. My f- website says absolutely nothing whatsoever in there because the reason it, it, it doesn't is that until now I've been very s- secretive of who my clients are because I, I even sit on boards or advisory boards, you know, and my clients had asked me to, um, not disclose what I do. So competition and things like that, or to mm-hmm. pre- prejudice. So I've always kept a very low profile and under the radar. But if you Google my name, it, it it's just one page and and you'll be able to get my phone number to my office and my assistant there is Diana and, and uh, she'll be more than happy to handle any of your questions or needs or if you want a consultation. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on. This is fascinating as always. I always enjoy our conversations and we've, we have a history together. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you very much for being, you know, having me. I really enjoyed it. So that concludes today's episode. You can find all the links mentioned on the episode notes. If you're enjoying these episodes, please take a moment to leave a review. Reviews are everything to podcasters and I will be giving shout outs to the usernames of reviews on future episodes. You can find me on my website at www.thewholesomelotus.com. And please be on the lookout for my online course and program, which will be available online soon. This course has emerged from everything that I've been using for the fertility program I now offer at my office. I wanted to consolidate all of my suggestions and coaching and put it into a form that anyone can purchase and use. It was important for me to encompass key fertility health factors, as well as guide you in implementing changes in your routine that are shown to boost fertility while being realistic and user-friendly. I will be offering this course with and without coaching. If you're interested and want updates as well as a free ebook on my top 10 fertility boosting habits, you can visit my fertility page on www.thewholesomelotus.com where you can find the subscription form. I'm also offering a discounted pre-registration price for a limited time. If you're interested in that, you can contact me on my contact page. I thank you so much for listening in and hope you have a beautiful day.